gone away and disappeared out in the jungle with his people. Oh, wait. You know, we have this thing about shooting everything with a very shallow depth of field to force people to look where you want them to look. Well, they did the opposite on this. They went to extraordinary lengths to get everything in focus. But you're never unsure of where you should be looking. You always know because of the framing and because the main character is maybe popped a little bit, maybe slightly brighter, your eye goes there straight away. And that's someone who knows their craft. You don't need to use focus to make people look where you want them to look. You just use half a stop brighter. You know, all the dark around, but you know where you look. Yeah, all right, stylized, but no. Well, I mean, they had to work really, really hard with the amount of light. I mean, it'd be really easy to do huge depth of field now if you wanted. You know, that's in focus from there to there. Nowadays, it would be his left ear in focus and nothing else. Powerful image. Now, dynamic range. Let's talk about high dynamic range. There's what, five stops in that? I'd rather have that than a high dynamic range image because it's done incredibly well. Come on, tell me Blade Runner didn't steal that. Raiders of the Lost Ark, anyone? I got, funnily enough, removed from a camera again. I was telling this story earlier, but a different one. I did Billy Graham's religious tour of Europe on um, television cameras. And I was in that camera position and I kept trying to frame him like this shot in Citizen Kane. No one really understood what I was doing until I mentioned it to another operator. One of Graham's people heard and I was stuck on a camera miles away that flattened everything out. Because I pointed out it was kind of like the Nuremberg rallies as well didn't go down terribly well. I mean, look at that, low angle, looking up at the roof. You know, I mean, it's just, they shot from different places to help tell the story. There's a tendency now, and I plead guilty to have done it myself, to shoot things in a documentary style. I shot Volanda very much in a documentary style, telling myself that the reason I was doing that was to give it reality and make it look not like a drama, but like a real thing you're observing. And part of it was that. And part of it was the schedule we were on. I didn't have time to do complicated lighting setups. So I had to find a way to make it work. And I think one of the things with this style of lighting, which is very hard lighting, is you don't get the time to do that anymore. That everyone wants you to shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot. And to use very placed lighting takes time. Oh, and it needs actors to hit their marks. I was asking a AC friend of mine what a very well-known actor was like. He'd just done a major film with him, um, whether he hit his marks. And the, the response was, hit his marks? You're lucky if he's in the same fucking room. <laughs> I think it's absolutely part of their job. And if they can't do that, um, they're incompetent. It was just incredible from the opening sequence with the doors and going, you know, this is the end. I 
having been a documentary camera and news cameraman, I've been on this kind of thing long, long ago, and it has a reality to it that's just quite incredible. But what's for me is strongest is this kind of thing. Because when I shot Mutant Chronicles with Simon Hunter, he asked me about shooting combat stuff and where he would shoot it from because he knew I'd done this for real. And I said, down here, as low as you can get and out the way, because you, you wouldn't shoot in a combat zone standing up with a high camera. And the whole thing is there's a subliminal message there and it's part of telling the story with images that it's a low angle. It's where you would do it if you were doing it for real. And that gives that image a strength, a subliminal message going across that this is shot for real. This isn't a war zone because the cameraman is not up here. He's down there hiding with the rest of them unlike this lunatic, which is brilliant. I mean, that kind of gets across the lunacy of the whole thing. And again, low angle looking up. Great story about how the sequence of Don't Get Off the Boat. Storaro delayed shooting, delayed shooting, delayed shooting, kept rehearsing and setting things up because he knew he wanted to shoot at one particular time of day. When he did shoot it, he shot it bang, 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 as fast as he could to get it consistent in that light and basically have come up with all kinds of excuses not to shoot unless he was happy with the light. And I think that's really important. This is Redoo, this is not the original. Redoo's a horrible film. Horrible film because it lost its focus. The whole point of this is don't get off the boat. The whole point is the journey up the river, the concentration on going to find Kurtz. And as soon as you have these extended side trips with the Playboy bunnies, with the French colonialists, there was a reason he cut it out of the first version because it distracts from the story. And there's a great thing of watching, if you watch making ofs, there's a wonderful James Cameron on Terminator 2 about the director's cut of Terminator 2, which is much longer, because he realised that the long opening sequence that kind of recapped what had happened in Terminator 2 was a waste of time because anyone who was interested in seeing T2 would have seen T1. So why waste 15 minutes of their time going over what they already know? And there's a sequence where they cut into Schwarzenegger's head and he did, he shot that in huge detail and you see that in the, the making of, and then he chopped it all out because it was just boring. And it's like, look, you know, you see the wide shot, you see his cutting, you see the inside, the bit coming out, that's all you need. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's cut to the essentials. Do you know that if is the middle word in life? If you can keep your head when all about you're losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you. It was amazing. That's how I saw myself in 67. That's what I wanted to be. And then I saw this film 20 years later. I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's what I was supposed to be. Except I went to be fashion photographer instead. Why do you want to kill you? <laughs> because I took his picture. I love the fact that this, you've paid a fortune to get Marlon Brando there. Now, perhaps you don't show him because he's a, a fat, wasted old git, or maybe it's just more threatening and more intimidating like that. I mean, I can't believe most directors or most producers letting someone shoot that, and that's just incredible. I mean, that to me is just a classic shot, but films, they won't let you do this anymore, but television will. And television's getting much more exciting. Mm -hmm.